it's, it's pretty obvious the brain loves creatine as a fuel. There's a ton of work looking at a host of cognitive factors um, from memory, executive function, even things like depression. Creatine is fantastic for recovery from muscle, for muscle damage, uh, it helps and, and can potentially aid in fat loss uh, and a whole host of things. It appears that one to three milligrams per kilogram of body weight of caffeine taken about 30 minutes before the event starts can really enhance reaction time and power output and uh, as uh, well as, as you mentioned, endurance. I've started taking Rhodiola before workouts and found that I could push much harder, much longer through the workout. Normally, the remaining period of time, it was kind of a tapering off. Oftentimes when we think of supplements, we immediately jump to high sport performance type of things or vigorous workouts or, or muscle building. Though that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. Uh, take for example, creatine. All the myriad of benefits of creatine, this is taken in the you know typically three to five grams per day of dose of creatine monohydrate, which has the most research behind it. Seems to be extremely low side effects in almost anyone. And the benefits include, of course, things like muscle performance and strength and things like that. There's excellent information and data coming out now on, on the benefits of bone mineral density in creatine. Uh, there's a ton of work looking at a host of cognitive factors um, from memory, executive function, uh, to effects potentially on even things like depression, uh, mood, to Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, all forms of, of neurodegenerative disease. Uh, in fact, it's, it's, it's pretty obvious the brain loves creatine as a fuel. I only say that to, again, maybe expand our understanding or thinking about what these types of supplements can do. It's not just about growing muscle or um, you know, high performance. It's everything to, again, there's an association with recovery. Uh, so creatine is fantastic for recovery from muscle, for muscle damage, uh, helps and, and can potentially aid in fat loss uh, and a whole host of things. Well, first of all, I started taking it when I was in college. At that time, I was taking it in this kind of loading mode where you take it, you know, anywhere from 15 to 25 grams per day, often causing some gastric distress, often combining it with fruit juice to try and shuttle it into the muscles. Sure. And then a so-called maintenance phase of reducing to 10 or 15 grams per day. Um, nowadays, I just take about five grams. It is very clear to me based on the literature uh, that you described and um, some of which we've covered on other episodes of the podcast that the phosphocreatine system is vitally important for forebrain function, uh, responsible for planning, action, setting rules and context. So anything that can favor function of the forebrain, I think is good for uh, humans in general. It suppresses anxiety, allows us to interpret what's going on for us. And so I'm very relieved and gratified to hear that creatine is for the most part a relatively affordable supplement yeah. for most people. It's not going to work as an acute response. So it's not something you're like, I feel terrible, let me throw some creatine down the hatch, I'll feel better. That That's not gonna work. It's going to take several weeks to have a noticeable effect. It needs to be stored in tissue. Uh, it needs to be built up before you can actually do much of anything. So it is unlike some of the other things like stimulants or caffeine that have an acute you know, response right now. Uh, and so if you're going to take it, you probably need to consume it consistently. If you can't do that, then really there's no point in doing it. I also could throw in a few other of these high impact, low cost, generally safe, um, things that are my 80, 20 rule, if you will. So the way I actually kind of think about it is uh, you want one from each of three categories. Uh, and these categories are fuel, stimulant, and fatigue blockers. So creatine is actually in the fuel. It's not a stimulant. As we talked about the chronic effect there. So we've already knocked that one off. Uh, another one from the uh, fatigue blocker is gonna be anything like beta alanine or sodium bicarbonate. And then from the stimulant use, of course, we have anything like a beetroot juice to a caffeine or uh, something of the equivalent. So we can come back again and talk about all those in more detail uh, a little bit later. Well, as I take a sip of my double espresso Americano here, I'd love for you to tell us about stimulants. Caffeine is the easy one to start with, and we won't belabor the point here. Uh, the evidence is strong. It has an ergogenic effect. You can take it at whatever dosage is reasonable for you. And of course, there is a bit of a learning curve there such that obviously the more you take it, the more you need to take, even though there's actually some recent evidence showing even folks who are uh, acclimated to it will still see an ergogenic benefit, even though if they don't feel a big boost of it. So typically that takes 30 to 45 minutes or so, but it's highly dependent upon the person. So some people can smell coffee and immediately feel better. And that's probably working actually through a different mechanism um, of anticipation, but you can take it there. It, the half-life of it is you know, four to six hours or something like that. It can totally depends on the person. So don't let it ruin your sleep. But if you take it prior to performance, it has a, a noticeable effect on particularly endurance. It appears that one to three milligrams per kilogram of body weight of caffeine taken about 30 minutes before the event starts can really enhance reaction time and power output and uh, as uh, well as, as you mentioned, endurance. 
when I was researching the caffeine episode, one interesting caveat that I discovered was that if people are not caffeine adapted, they are not regular users of caffeine, the sudden introduction of caffeine can really degrade performance, mostly because people don't know how to operate at that high level of autonomic arousal. Have you ever observed that? Yeah, 100%. In fact, once you cross the five milligram per kilogram threshold, you will start seeing performance decrements. So there's absolutely such a thing of ruining your performance with too much caffeine. So most people listening to this, if you're thinking, wow, they said caffeine, I'm all in, and then you just stop listening, and now you you know go for your quad espresso shot before your, every time you go to work out, you probably are passing that threshold. If you think about those numbers, one to three milligrams per kilogram body weight. If you weigh 100 kilograms, that's 220 pounds. That'd be something like two to 500 milligrams of caffeine, which is like a pretty high amount. Um, but, you know, a coffee is going to get you close. An espresso is going to get you somewhat in that ballpark, depending on source and stuff. Um, so you don't really need to go and blister your brain with caffeine. And in fact, if you do, it's, it's quite common and in fact, likely that you'll actually make performance worse. There's actually another line of supplementation that we can go down here, which is not technically a stimulant, but it's something I use to help performance when you don't want caffeine. And so this thing specifically, if you're one of those folks who have to exercise at night and you want a little bit of boost for your training, but you don't want to have caffeine because it messes up your sleep. Uh, and this is when you can turn to the whole like citrulline, arginine, nitric oxide sort of route. And uh, we'll skip the explanation there. But effectively what happens is nitric oxide is this wonderful compound that causes vasodilation. And of course, that's going to aid then in transporting nutrients in and out of the cell. Um, so it has an ergogenic effect. The, you have a number of ways you can go about this. In my opinion, the most consistent evidence for the most consistent effect is in the supplement of beetroot or beetroot juice or extract or something like that. So you can find those supplements and they tend to, uh, again, they're pretty effective at enhancing performance, specifically anything moderate to longer duration endurance performance, and they are not a stimulant, so they won't ruin your sleep that much. I'm very interested to learn from you about fatigue reducers. And I'm hoping that rhodiola rosea will come up in the conversation. Yeah, great. Let's just start right there then. There's actually a lot of research on this, despite uh, most people not having heard of it. One of the benefits that has been seen so far with rhodiola is, is helpful at managing cortisol, but cortisol suppression is not a necessarily a good thing. Um, we talked about how if you do an acute bout of stress, cortisol will, will go way up. And that is a sign of, of acute stress. However, a sign of long-term excessive stress is cortisol suppression. And so this is a, a thing to be really careful of is if you're feeling down or lethargic or tired and you think your adrenals are messed up and then you start taking cortisol modulators, you could be making the problem worse because now your cortisol is actually suppressed. And now you're taking these things to blunt it or keep it low and, and you're, you continue to feel lethargic and, and lack of desire and libido and focus and, and sort of all these things. So cortisol is not a bad thing. The difficult part with rhodiola, to be quite honest, is getting it from a high quality brand and source. It's difficult to get as a single source, which is a very, very important thing to do with supplements is try to get them sourced alone. Uh, rhodiola typically comes in combination with any other herbals or other stuff, you know, adrenal support, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and also then getting them then third party certified, which for most folks is not necessary, but for any athletes that need to go through drug testing systems, you should not take any supplement at all that does not have some sort of third party certification. Yeah, I'm fairly sensitive to supplements, but I've started taking uh, rhodiola before workouts and found that I could push much harder, much longer through the workout. Normally I would, uh, or typically before taking it, that is in sessions where I did not take it, I would be able to work out very hard for 20 minutes or so. The next 10 minutes I could get some work output and then the remaining period of time, it was kind of a tapering off. What I've noticed is I can complete the entire 60 minutes with minimal fatigue now. I mean, obviously I hit fatigues within sets and of course, you know, I, you remain human despite taking it. But um, I found it to be very useful and I've been using it whenever I use Alpha GPC prior, prior to workouts.